Our next boy, coming up to the stage, Joshua Merritt. Joshua Merritt. Come back. The first time I got on a stage, the microphone descended ever so disinterested towards the ground, and as I attempted to woo it to a more erect position, someone made me a joke. And my poetry fluttered floor around in the stillness I felt was soft and dangerous. There are few things more gratifying to me than bad impressions. I've spent the past seven years fighting to win back something I didn't know I had lost. It started when I realized I was gay and cemented, when I realized that the chances of me being a frequent subject of pity prayer in my church would exponentially increase if I had so much as uttered the words boyfriend or Liza Minnelli. <laughs> and I love the Lord. I still do. I fit right in with the passive-aggressive, conniving, adulterous, murderous lot he got to write his big book of poems and laws, the same ones that erected a tree of life, born from blood instead of breath. My God, I must be either brain dead or stupid, or you must be alive because your people haven't changed much. Your people still take the innocence of children and cast aside the weak, and I can still show up on Sunday with a smile on my face after saying no to a man the night before who had eyes that brought sound back into my skin, resonating like a tube under his tuning fork gaze. It didn't matter that he was balding and had bad taste in shoes because he could make me laugh and it didn't matter to my church that he could make me laugh because you God apparently said no. I don't want to talk to you anymore or your people. I'm leaving because I don't want to be asked to leave and as I walk down my dusty stairs, the prospect of calling them becomes the tortilla casserole my mother tried to make me finish when I was seven and I am young again, breathing, take a bite, Swallow. I can't speak to them. What am I supposed to say? I can say what they want to hear and cast my credibility overboard for the sake of comforting them and avoiding the platitudes. They will inevitably pluck from some obscure understanding of a God they talk to even less than they talk to me. I can laugh and make jokes. I can quip and quibble until I've spun them into such a state of humor that the very questions they were so adamantly presenting to me are like dandelion buds carried away by the wind, and I can attend to them. I can reveal my competence in the areas they most enjoy and blend my inadequacies into the background of the blinding noonday sun and I can make a big show of it. There could be fog machines and sequins, jazz hands, jazz hands. Do you like this? Do I look okay to you? Is this cutting it enough? I'm done. This act is over. But do you want to know something? That, that was the droopy microphone part. It was the section of the night where I get up and make everyone think they'd be better off taking a bathroom break than listening to this mess. When people cough and smile and hope it's short and sweet. Well, here we go, folks. Here's the gunshot. Make your penis jokes now because the poetry, it's on the floor. And I'm about to get speaking not just with my lips, but with my life. And when I do, you better glue your ass to the chair because my bad impression is about to become a And everyone tells me that my smile is contagious. 
I'm the cutest I've ever seen with the endless stream of laughter. People think fame is the reason I want to be a rapper. I don't want to be famous. And every time I say that, people look at me like I'm brainless. But being famous is not what I'm focused on first, because I know others who have it much worse. I've got a friend without a house. I don't want to be famous. I've got a friend without a dad. I don't want to be famous. I've got a friend who rides his bike for 30 minutes to work. I've got a friend whose dad is addicted to cocaine. I've got a friend who's raising a child on her own because the father was man enough to stick it in but not man enough to stick around. I've got a friend who has a birth mark on her face and believes that because of it, no one will ever find her beautiful. I've got a friend whose dad flies in California every weekend to work, but in reality, he gets drunk and goes to the casinos, doesn't call his daughter all weekend, then comes home on Monday and tells her, her 12 year old little sister, that he was too busy working to talk to them when they both know what he was really doing. I don't want to be famous. I'd rather have my words than my smile be contagious, and it's a wish. And I wish that what I said was something I could make up, but it's been re my reality ever since I saw my friend lying in that casket and knew he wouldn't wake up. Our next poet, Katerina Dory. Come on up, Katerina. Of what appears to be a full life or a waiting place. 